Hey there, Postal here. Well, today we're taking out, uh, well, we're taking out the Swift Tier 10 British Fighter. Uh, we'll see what we can do here. Um, got Dr. Payne on the enemy team and Mike Zero in a Hunter, both of which I can actually, obviously, easily outturn. The question is going to be, what can I do about their speed? Well, Swift is a pretty darn quick plane. Uh, Swift is named after the bird, not how fast it goes. But that being said, this plane does go pretty darn fast. So let's go ahead and use that speed. Let's go ahead and see what kind of uh, trouble we can bring. The Swift is really quite good at taking out targets that have high health pools. Uh, targets that don't have the ability to completely outturn uh, the guns. This has two 30mm cannons, which can be very, very frustrating. Especially when you've been used to the 20mm uh, Hispanos that were so lovely on the Spitfire and Attacker beforehand. Um, you know, this plane is going to be utilizing these 30 millimeter cannons, which just don't have that kind of uh, spray and pray kind of ability that Hispanos have. That being said, does very very good job when simply attacking larger targets, non-maneuvering targets. Absolutely tears up. I love these freaking uh, Aidens for that. And uh, we'll see if we can put him to good use. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go actually go get this garrison over here. Oh, hello. Gonna hit him and run. Oh, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't run. Go ahead and head to the s nope, never mind, not gonna head to the center. We need to get that sector though. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and move along to this garrison. I'm keeping my engine cooling in reserve just in case I need to do something that involves speed. Uh, the plane has plenty of speed as it is, and so I don't necessarily need the engine cooling just in my normal flight patterns here but I may need it to stick with or try to catch up to the XF-90 go is any fighters inbound directly on me no he's just kind of floating out there oh his engines knocked out nice let's go ahead and see what we can do here A little bit higher than we necessarily want to be. Looks like we're going to be pushing air supremacy here in just a second. Use these cannons. These cannons are really quite good versus um, GAs. At least for damage output. Clearly not uh, enough to actually get it killed, but two passes is not a big deal. Oh, nice bomb drop there. Uh, that's pretty funny. Alright, so how are we doing as a team? Well, our uh, EF-131 is doing EF-131 kind of things. Our XF-90 has not been able to counter him. At least not yet. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Unfortunately, because I died, they actually captured that sector. Which kind of sort of sucks. Uh, that's what I get for being so low, I suppose. Hmm, let's head to the center then. I'm not going to head off by my lonesome. <clears throat> Got this hunter again. And let's see what else we can get knocked out. Attacker, hello, sir. Zip, 
somebody else gonna get him? Oh, I shouldn't have turned in front of him. Too late now. There we go. Nice. All right, so we've got that attacker. Let's use our speed right now. F86, I'm not gonna catch up with. Not this far away, anyway. Uh, the attacker can outmaneuver us. Typically. Hello. And like I said earlier, I don't really like going for light fighters. But um, if he's what's in front of me, then I gotta kill him. Unfortunately, I'm getting stuck defending a sector here when I really don't wanna be. I really would like to be um, actually helping to attack. I mean, I know we've got an EF-131, but I, I know he's going to need some sort of help. Let's go ahead and let's get to this garrison, I guess. Center's well enough defended. <clears throat> we're not down by too many points, but we're down, so... We're down by two, a little bit of points, but more importantly, we're down by one sector. So let's see if we can't get a sector back. Which it looks like we'll be able to. Uh, let's head to the center, see what we can do at the center. That's uh, HG there, 262. <coughs> Both fighters, that's gonna be, this is actually gonna be kinda of tricky. Let's try to get the attacker first, just cause I know. I've got the ability to take him down. Fortunately, he knocked out his engine, which is not actually a good thing for somebody that is trying to outspeed everything. Let's go ahead and see if I can get, uh, get my guns on target here really quick. F-86 actually scares me quite a bit, just because he can easily outturn me. Got to pay attention to the map, though, of course, as well. Victory is in sight. Come on, thank you. Let me get this sector. We should have gotten gone for the plane that was a little bit more in front of me there. Here we go. Ours. Let's head back to the center here. That uh, XF-90 is still out there somewhere, and our EF-131 is dead, so we cannot sit on our laurels. Um, F-84. Here we go. Got a 212 inbound. Actually, they're both inbound. I want to try to get rid of this guy first just because he's on lower health. There we go. Take advantage of the low health uh, targets, right? <clears throat> Looks like, uh, yeah, perfect. Dang. We, see, we didn't use our engine boost the entire time, which is a goddamn miracle as far as I'm concerned. Um, wow. Onward and upward, huh? We'll I was able to get a coasted up out of that. First first game of the day. I should start recording my first games more often. They tend to be uh, ridiculously awesome. 
So yeah, we didn't run into the XF90, but we were prepped for him one way or the other. Let's head back. All right, so we actually got a postal medal out of that. 19 kills, no more, no less. Um, Hero of the Sky and all that jazz, as you saw there. Really wasn't even able to, to put the Swift at its best extent, right? Like, we took care of that Hunter. Um, but we should be able to take care of a Hunter, like, as long as we're the ones paying attention. Uh, any any fighter should be able to. I was really actually looking forward to going against that XF90, even though he's in my clan. Uh, and the reason being is because I've I've got my Swift like basically maxed out. And although I don't have it maxed out for speed, it still has enough air speed for sure to stick with some of the heavier planes out there, especially the bot ones. But if I ha hang on to my engine cooling. I can typically stick with um, enemy heavy fighters, especially when they're not paying attention. The um, the great thing about the Swift is the 30 millimeter cannons on this particular plane just hit so incredibly hard. Uh, the key is to get them to be hitting. And so I've got my pilot set up for accuracy as much as possible. Now, obviously, there's going to be some nuances to that. Um, apparently, my plane has turned into a blimp <laughs> what is this is it inside it is so the <laughs> i where i can't i can only see it through the um these little airfoils at the back here can i even just this one here peekaboo there's my swift hiding inside of a uh well that's a weird bug isn't it yeah, so this thing is, is what did all that stuff. Um, and so, you know, you have two 30 millimeter cannons. I actually prefer these over the 30 millimeter cannons that you can get on the uh, German planes, simply because the effective firing range is, is slightly more. 2,600 feet compared to, I think it's like 2,300 feet for the, um, the German ones. German ones do a little bit more damage, though, so, I mean, because it's, it's a point of preference, right? How I've set my plane up, though, is you've already got a ridiculous amount of airspeed. So I wanted to, to still, you know, go ahead and, and tap into that a little bit. So I've got my operated engine here. I did not want to go with something like um, injection boost because that takes away from the boost availability. And I did not want to take away from that. So operated engine it was. But having this much speed, it's really only going to be good in certain situations well no, i take that back <laughs> having this much speed is good all the time but i felt like that i was running into situations where having more maneuverability was going to be a little bit more helpful when you're in a fighter typically you're going to run into other fighters and trying to either stick with them or get your guns on target a little bit quicker is incredibly helpful and so rather than going all in on speed which i did do a setup of all in on speed on this particular plane the maneuverability was so poor though that I, I might as well have been in a MiG. And if you're going to be in a MiG, at least you got three guns instead of two. Um, and so I was like, well, let's 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 lean in on the above average maneuverability. It's uh, it's not the best maneuverability, but it's not terrible. Let's lean in on that and see what we can do as far as you know setting up for dogfighting situations. And so I went with lightweight wing frame and lightweight power unit. And that definitely has helped uh, move me from a middling, uh, I think this was the low 60s, when it, you, you get it out of the box, um, got it to the low 70s. When I went with an all speed build, I was in the 50s for maneuverability, and it just wasn't, wasn't going to be, wasn't worth it. Um, as far as equipment is concerned, I've gone ahead and maximized the gyroscopic sight. The plane, I haven't found any kind of buff to having the um, G-suit on this particular plane. Navigational radio equipment doesn't really make sense for the situation that I need out of this particular plane. And cockpit armor makes no sense. So gyroscopic sight it is. Get that accuracy buffed up as much as possible. Plus the bonuses help in um, the chances to inflicting critical damage and causing fires. 
um, and even an additional bonus for accuracy. Last but not least, I've decided, and I was really going back and forth on what was going to be the best thing to mount on the forward firing weapon. And I've gone with gas operated action, buffing up that rate of fire. Yeah, unfortunately, it takes an accuracy hit, uh, minus 16%, basically. Uh, but the combination of the equipment and my pilot skills, which we'll look at in just a second, more than counter that um, impact that you have on the um, accuracy, the negative impact that you have with the gas-operated action. The reason I went with the gas-operated action, action is because the rate of fire is increased, which really does help uh, hit those planes that are as tiny and maneuvering a lot. If your rate of fire is a little bit higher, you'll be able to um, you know, hopefully hit those particular planes. Uh, that being said, I have seen people use reinforced bolt carriers to, to get that burst length to be um, expanded. I tested that out. I didn't really find it viable for me. Um, I found it better to, to make a decision of was I going to turn with this plane or was I going to continue on. Basically play more like a heavy fighter when you're in this plane going against light fighters. And if you do that, you know, then reinforced bolt carriers, you can... Anything about the burst length can be mitigated just by playing like a heavy fighter when you're going against turn fighters. Long gun barrels, though, was more of a viable option, getting the range of fire um, increased and also um, helping with not impacting the accuracy. But the burst length was impacted so significantly that um, I just feel like gas operated action for me is the best option for my play style. Again, there is some viability to all three options for your forward firing weapon. And the fact that you have a guns, uh, an equipment slot for your forward firing weapon is definitely a nice thing. You can kind of build the guns around your play style. As far as consumables are concerned, I've gone for the first aid uh, package here. I want to make sure that if my pilot gets knocked out, I can get my gun accuracy back up to 100% as quickly as possible. Um, for the airframe, I've got pneumatic control assist. If I get stuck in those dogfighting situations um, or I, I feel like I need to go all in on a dogfight and I want to be able to turn, I'll take advantage of that. For instance, you might have seen me um, hit that when I was going against the F-86 just in case he turned around on me, just in case I needed to stick with him. I was going to be able to do with that. Um, on the engine slots, I... Don't get my engine knocked out all that much. And again, I'm really trying to push the speed envelope on here. So I've got improved mixture control and engine cooling. So I didn't use engine cooling at all this last battle simply because I wanted to hang on to it if I needed to do something against that XF-90, which I never ran into. Um, and But but that's why I have it there. I, I will, if I'm not going against, if I'm going against a favorable matchup, how about we say that, I will use my engine cooling whenever the heck I feel like it. If I think the enemy plane that I'm going against is going to be a pain in my butt, I will save the engine cooling to either try to escape them, which can happen versus certain planes like Yak-30s and whatnot, or I'll use it to try to stick with them if I'm trying to take down an XF-90, a Javelin, a HG-3, um, a MiG-15. Any of those planes that think they're faster than you typically are faster than you, but if you catch them at the right opportunity, engine cooling can come in incredibly handy. Uh, universal ammo, because universal ammo, I've got the credits to do it. It's worth the 10,000 credits as far as I'm concerned, although I've got no you know, actual evidence of that. <laughs> All right, as far as my pilot is concerned on my blimp, my ridiculous blimp plane, uh, the pilot that I have set up here Again, fully focused on the um, accuracy. This is the same pilot that I believe I've you know just had the whole time when I was on the British grind. And so he is a 10-point pilot. Marksman 2, in my opinion, is in incredibly helpful for this particular plane. In, in fact, Marksman 2 is helpful for any plane that has just two 30-millimeter cannons. Uh, the big thing that helps is the accuracy of firing um, at actively maneuvering targets. Basically, that means that your auto aim is going to be buffed. And auto aim with 30 millimeter cannons, when that's all you've got, is you're literally hit or miss. It's not like you're just spraying a bunch of 50 caliber machine guns 
or even the 20 millimeter cannons that they put out enough volume when your amount of actual gunfire is less than everybody else you want to make sure that the the ability to actually hit the enemy is increased so marksman 2 is definitely the way that i'd recommend on here um, and then I've got Aerodynamics Expert because Aerodynamics Expert was kind of broken for a while. So that was the way to go. And Aerobatics Expert. Uh, I've got five points left to go. You'd think, okay, let's just get Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2. It's very likely that's the way I'll go if I ever get a 15-point pilot in this game. There are some other viable options, though. Things like um, Evasive Target is certainly not a bad option. Um that, you know, just as you're turning can help you receive less damage. Another really good one is, um, is it this one here? Yes, Adrenaline Rush. Um, reduces your weapon overheating and increases the firing accuracy. That could be a viable option too. I don't actually really use either um, either of these options very much. I use Evasive Action on my, my F-86 actually. But Adrenaline Rush... Might be one of those that on, on a plane like this where the weapons tend to overheat, um, being able to get like get the guns to cool down quicker after you've killed the target, is a pretty pretty viable option I would say. So I'll be thinking about that. Next will definitely be Engine Guru one though, and then we'll decide if I go for Engine Guru two or something like Adrenaline Rush. Anyway, I really wish that my plane was seeable. <laughs> That's kind of sort of what I want it to be. Yeah. We'll just have to do that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this particular battle in my hiding in a blimp plane. I really do like the Swift. And, and, and if you look back at my first video on the Swift, I really didn't like the Swift. But I, I've said this so many times on my live streams, and I'll repeat it again here. It's not necessarily the plane. More often than not, it's the pilot. Um, I found that out about ground attackers, which I thoroughly enjoy now. I found that out about things like the Swift and the Su-9. Uh, I'm trying to find that out about bombers because I'm not the best bomber pilot, but I'm trying to learn more about those. So I highly encourage you, if you are struggling with a particular plane, Keep trying it. Try something different with that plane. Set up with your mentality of how to do uh, an attack run and go from there. The Swift is completely different than everything else at uh, this line. It's the opposite of uh, Spitfire, right? It's incredibly fast um, and mediocre maneuverability rather than incredibly maneuverable with mediocre speed. Um, so keep that in mind. And the guns are very different as well. So a lot of people get the Swift and don't like it because it's so different than the attacker and so different than everything before it. So definitely keep that in mind when you're going down this line. Don't get disappointed. I highly recommend probably grinding a couple different lines at the same time. So that way if you get the Swift, you're not like, what the heck, I just grinded all this way for a completely different plane that I'm not enjoying. Um, that's my recommendation. I'd love to hear your guys set up for the Swift. Did you own this particular plane? Not the blimp. Yeah, not, not the blimp, but the actual jet. <laughs> do you own the Swift? Is it something that you enjoy playing? Um, do you have a, a similar setup, or have you gone a completely different way? Have you gone all in on speed? Or have you done something completely different? I'd love to hear your setup uh, and your thoughts. And um, I don't know what's going on with this blimp, but we'll, we'll figure something else out. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.